They feed on your flaws. They drain your time. And they never leave you alone. Hey, I need to run a few errands. Can you watch my dog? Again? Welcome to Discovery Church, man. So glad that you guys are here with us. This whole series is about loving people. How do you love people? God has called us to love everybody. You guys know that? Like we're called to love everybody. But I wonder how many of you have uh, realized that some people make it really hard. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Because the people in your life that make it really hard to, to love them. So we're doing this series called Relational Vampires. Because what, what, vampire, what do vampires do? Vampires suck the blood out of you, right? What does a relational vampire do? A relational vampire sucks the life out of you, okay? So we're going to have four different topics, four different types of relational vampires, and how can we love them and be, how can we set up healthy boundaries in our life and still yet love these people that God has called us to love that make it very difficult to love? So here's the first uh, type of relational vampire we're talking about today are the incredibly controlling people in our life. Those people are very controlling. How many of you know a control freak here? Anyone knows a control freak? If you tried to raise your hand down and the person next to you tried to pull it down, you're probably <laughs> sitting next to a control freak. Or even when I said that, control freak, do you know a control freak? Your mind probably went to a few people. You're probably thinking about saying, don't point to them right now. Don't point to them. It'll make this message very awkward and very hard if you point them out right now. No, I'm kidding. It's just, it's, it's unfortunate, you guys. We've all been hurt by controlling people. Every one of us, whether it was like an authority figure, a parent, an aunt or uncle, a grandparents, or a boss, or a supervisor, um, it, it, we, a lot of us have been abused and hurt by um, controlling people. And, and oftentimes, they're not, the, these people aren't malicious. They're not intentionally trying to hurt anybody. Most of the time, they're just operating based upon the, the scripts that were pasted, passed down to them from their parents, or they're just, they're just, they're hurt themselves, and they don't know anything else but to hurt people. So in this series, you're not only going to probably, hopefully, hopefully discover and I am going to teach. There's going to be a lot of teaching today because um, I think that the, the idea with controlling people, it's so deceptive to find a controlling person because what they do, what controlling people, they don't respect you. They don't respect really or value who you are. They're trying to create a new you. They're trying to, they're trying to put a new version of you and replace you with the version they think of you. They're trying to give you a new image instead of the image God created they're trying to recreate you in their image. So really what they're doing is, is these relational vampires are, are taking our souls, controlling, manipulative people. They try to rob you of your identity and your soul. And there's, I think, a lot of people that are unknowingly affected by, like, you don't even know who you are. You only are who you are. You are who they think you are and they who you want, who they want you to be. So I'm, I'm going to teach a lot in this message and in this series because I need the help of the Holy Spirit and his word to shine some lights into the areas of your relationships or possibly even into your own life where we can adopt tactics that are controlling and manipulative. And it's not that we're bad people. It's just if you put us in that situation in that specific circumstance or with that person, things happen and we become something that we don't want to be. So I'm going to teach this and expose some things and get really teachy for a moment, but it's hard. It's really hard to identify the people and the tactics when they're employed ourselves. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4 is a really good verse. It's just really hard to do. We like it, but it's hard to actually live this way. Do, look what he says. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. We like that. It sounds good. But are you hearing this? Do nothing because you're going to benefit from it and you're going to grow from it selfishly. That shouldn't be your motivation. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, count others more significant than yourself. Like treat people better as better than you. Let each of you not look only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. 
Contro- control is a, is a big problem in our, in our relationships. And it comes in, it's in our family, in our friends, in our romantic, in our professional. When people control you, they're trying to make up a new reality for you. They're trying to replace your reality and narrative with a, with a different reality and narrative. So, so here's the big, like the big idea today and in this series is, is this. I don't think it's in your notes, but you guys might want to take a picture of this. All relationships come from two things, what we create and what we allow. You think about it. Like all of your relationships, you guys, every relationship you have, your marriage, your siblings, your boss, your coworkers, your, your friends, your children, they're always a combination of either the things we have rightly or purposefully created or what you have passively allowed. So we've created patterns. We create healthy patterns or we allow unhealthy ones. Every relationship you have is a combination of those two things, the things that you have created in that relationship or the things you passively allow. You think about that person that drives you crazy. That person that drives you crazy, that boss, that mother-in-law, whoever it is, that person, that whoever. It's, it's a combination of what you created in that relationship and what you allowed. You have a spouse that continues to act in controlling ways. Why? Because you created some healthy patterns, sure, but some unhealthy patterns you allowed to go unchecked and unaddress. Controlling is a form of manipulation. It's a manipulation tactic. Here's the definition of of manipulation. Manipulation, check this out, is to manage or utilize skillfully, to control. That's what we're doing when we're manipulating people, to control or play upon by artful, unfair, or insidious means, especially to one's own advantage. Because I want you to do what I want you to do. It's my interest. I'm trying to get my end result here for my interest. I'm trying to get my advantage in this relationship. So um, what are the weapons of a controlling person? What are the signs that show up? I want to help you. And I'm going to get teachy here because I want to shine some light. Because there are some people in your life that you don't even know that they're sucking the life out of you. There are some things that you do unknowingly and you are operating in controlling and manipulative ways. So we're gonna, I'm gonna break it down for you. What are the signs of a relational vampire? Write some notes. Here's the first, probably the biggest thing that they do is they'll threaten you. That's what controlling relational, controlling people do. They threaten you. How do they, how do these threats manifest? In some form or fashion, they will uh, say or imply that, you know, if you don't do this, then I'm going to punish you. If you're not going to do it, then you're going to regret it. In other words, if you don't do what I want you to do in one form or fashion, you're going to pay for it. You're going to pay if you don't. And so they'll get angry. They'll erupt with frustration. They'll threat you. It's the, it's the person who threats to leave or threats to harm. They'll, that's, a, that's a control tactic. They'll threaten you. First Kings chapter 19, verse 2 talks about this... Uh, This woman in the Bible named Jezebel, she was the wife of Ahab in the time where where um, where Elijah was the prophet. And we get from this woman, she was she is a very controlling, manipulative person. We actually get the Jezebel spirit, the spirit of Jezebel. You guys guys may have heard that it's very overused and misused today. The the spirit of Jezebel. All it means, all that means, is a very manipulative spirit. It's a it's a controlling, manipulative tactic that Jezebel employed in her leadership. Now, she was married to the king, and so she wanted all the prophets to serve and worship false gods, and if they didn't, she would threaten or kill them. And so Elijah was like, I'm not following you. You're not going to tell me what to do. I'm going to worship and serve the one true God. And he actually has this miracle standoff with these false prophets and kills, like God kills a whole bunch of these false prophets. And Jezebel sent a message to Elijah to say, may the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow, I do not make your life like one of them. She was trying to manipulate Elijah to do what she wanted him to do. Now, those people that show up in our life, most likely they're not gonna threaten to kill you, but, but maybe it's the boyfriend that kind of implies that he'll leave you if you don't have sex with him. He just kind of implies it or he says it outright or, or it's the boss who terrifies you and makes you feel like you're going to get fired or, 
or demoted if you, don't, if you don't perform or produce or you're always on edge or maybe it's the spouse that always threatens to leave you. Maybe they throw out the divorce word or threaten the separation word and they use threats to manipulate and to control you. It's one of the main tactics and signs of a controlling a relational vampire in your life is they threaten you. They're angry, frustrated, and they'll use threats to try to control you. Here's number two. The second sign is they give you the silent treatment. The silent treatment. Yeah, yeah. And, and we, all, we all know this is wrong, yet most of us do this, don't you? You, you employ some type of silent treatment to the people that you love. Here, please listen to me. Silent treatment doesn't work. It doesn't work. It is stubbornness. It is mean. It is disrespectful and manipulative. And it is harmful and destructive to your marriage and the relationships that you care about. It, it, it's unholy. It is ungodly. It is unkind. It causes people to feel unimportant and, in, and not of value or worth. Frustration and anger. It is, it is, a, it is a spirit of manipulation. To, be a, to use the, employ the silent treatment. That's a tactic to have that person do what you want them to do without actually engaging in dialogue or seeking to understand. It's a form of punishment to get your way. And that's being a relational vampire. First, I know I'm not gonna get a lot of amens in this. I know, because you're like, if I say amen, then either me, they're gonna think me or them or something. So I get it. I'm just gonna keep preaching, you guys. For rebellion is as bad as the, look at this, as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as bad as worshiping idols. See, the, the, this, this control, and this is why I'm taking some time to teach this and to show forms and signs, and I'm gonna help you with getting out of this, this, this under the spell of manipulation and control because it is a form of a spell. It's manipulation and control is a form of witchcraft. It, it, look, look at the definition of witchcraft. Check, check this out. Look at this, you guys. Witchcraft is counterfeit spiritual authority. It is using a spirit other than the Holy Spirit to dominate, manipulate, or what? Or control others. See, that's why, I mean, we got to take the time here to shine because there's some stuff going on inside of your life and in those relationships that I don't think you, you know are happening. There is a spirit of manipulation and control and witchcraft that is robbing you of your soul, that is replacing the true you who God has created to a different you that someone else wants you to be. They'll threaten you. They'll give you the, the silent treatment. Here's the third one. Here's the third sign. They play the victim. They play the victim. Yeah. So controllers and manipulators in our life, they're hard to place and find and pin because they, they're really good at turning the table on you, man. They'll turn the victim card, turn it back around you so quick. So when you tell a controller something like this, please don't talk to me like that. The controller will usually say something like, I don't need to be attacked like that. And they're the one like yelling in anger and threatening you or incredibly, you can't control me. You're so controlling. They'll put it right back on you. It's amazing how they play the victim or they'll say something like, why do you always have to start fights like this? It's so, it was going so good. And they play the victim card. And it's, I'm telling you, it's a reality distortion. They distort reality and it's a spirit of confusion. It's, it's, a, it's a spell that we're under. Judges chapter 16 says, it talk, this, this story is, is Samson had this girlfriend by the name of Delilah who actually was a relational vampire, manipulative person who, who used this victim you know, tactic to, to control Samson. And it's crazy. We read this story and we all, we all most of us read it and we're going to read it right now. And we look at it from the outside in and we go, Samson, what are you thinking, man? She's obviously a snake in the grass, man. She's obviously trying to manipulate you. But when you're under the spell, when you're under that manipulation and your soul has been taken little by little and life sucked out of you, it's hard to see. And I'm just praying in the mighty name of Jesus for revelation to happen in this place today, freedom to happen in this place today. Delilah pouted, how can you say you love me? She's trying to kill. She's trying, she's trying to betray him to get the secret of his strength and betray him to the Philistines. How can you? She turned the tables on him. How can you say you love me when you don't confide in me? You've made fun of me. That's not even the reality. That's not what happened. 
It's not what happened at all. She's actually got caught two different times already, but she's twisting on him. You've made fun of me three times now, and you still haven't told me what makes you so strong. So day after day, look at this. She nagged him until she sucked the life out of that poor dude until he couldn't stand it any longer. And finally, Samson told her the secret. She played the victim. She turned the tables on him and and those relational vampires, those controlling, manipulative people are really good at pulling the victim card. That's how you, you can, there's a sign of a controlling person. Here's the fourth sign, and that is they guilt you. They will guilt you, these controlling people. So they'll say things like, after all I've done for you? Why, after all, I thought we were friends. I thought we were close. Um, or, or obviously, I can't count on on you. I guess I can't count on you. And they'll guilt you into doing what they want you uh, to do. Or, or some parents employ this guilt tactic as a parenting tool to get your kids to do what you want them to do. And unknowingly, you parents are, listen, you are biting your children and creating relational vampires just like you. I told, I said it, I said it, it wasn't good to happen. Some people are chronically, like they're chronically, you're bailing them out, right? And they'll make you feel guilty. So you keep bailing them out, bailing them out, bailing them out, and coming to their rescue. And, they, and, and controllers and manipulators, they, they guilt you. They tried to do it to Jesus. Luke chapter 10, um, Martha tried to actually guilt Jesus into, into doing something that you know, he didn't want to do. So she, Martha, had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had been made. She said, this is, what the, this is what I'm doing, and this is what should be done. Mary should be doing what I want her to do. She came to him, to Jesus, and asked, Lord, don't you care? Don't you care about me? Don't you? And that's with the guilt trip. Did you see it? The guilt trip happening? Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me, I mean, get her, get her away from your feet listening and to have her do what I want her to do. And you'll notice if you go read the story, Jesus just, he says, Martha, Martha, you worry about and you're bothered about so many things. See, Jesus was gentle, but note that he didn't accept the manipulation, the guilt trip that was laid on him by Martha. And notice he didn't even do what she said. She said, tell my sister. He didn't, he didn't, he wasn't, he wasn't manipulated or controlled by people. And people will try to guilt you into doing what they want you to to do. Here's the fifth sign of a controlling person. They skew the facts. They skew the facts, kind of like, you know, Delilah was in, in, in saying that, that, you know, you, you, you love, why, why, why are you making fun of me? So they don't, they don't accept responsibility for failures or, or, so what they'll do is, because if they apologize, if they accept responsibility and they have to apologize, apologizing to a manipulator and controller is losing control. That's what it is. And so they, are, they do not like saying, I'm sorry. They don't say, please forgive me. They won't do things like that because they need to be in control. So they'll skew the facts. And when they should assume responsibility, they twist it around and they blame you or blame them, blame anybody else because I'm not, I'm not the one. I got to stay in control. It's one of the signs of a manipulative, controlling person is they do not accept the facts. They will twist it and make it somebody else's fault instead of assuming responsibility. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul had to deal with some manipulators that actually infiltrated the church at Corinth. And what they were doing is they were trying to remove control from Paul and prop themselves up and take some authority from Paul and give it to themselves. And they were talking bad about Paul saying he's not really that. He's, they were talking about his abilities and the churches that he started. And they were trying to say he's not all that good, you guys. And, and, they were, and so he had to address it. And I will keep, Paul says, and I will keep on doing what I'm doing in order to cut the ground out from under those who want an opportunity to be considered equal with us in the things they boast about. He said, I'm going to continue to do what God has called me to do. I'm going to do, and that, what that is going to do, I'm just going to continue, to, and it's going to cut the feet out from under. I'm just going to continue. I'm not going to let them control me or manipulate me. For such people are false apostles deceitful workers, masquerading, manipulating as apostles of Christ. And no wonder for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. He says, it's no surprise then if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness, their end will be what their actions deserve. 
He says, hey, no, go ahead, just watch it. Watch the fruit. Watch, the, watch what the end result is. You go ahead and watch. I'm going to continue to do what God has called me to do. You watch their actions. See what the end result of that is going to do. I'm not going to let them control me and let them skew the facts. It's a sign of a manipulative controller. Here's the sixth one. And the last one I'll give you is that they twist your words. They'll twist your words. They'll, they'll, they'll repeat your words back to you with some flair and flavor. <laughs> so put some words in your mouth that you didn't say. They just twist it. Uh, the, the psalmist David in Psalm 56, he dealt with people like this. He said, all day long they twist my words. All their schemes are for my ruin. So it's hard, it's hard to recognize controlling people in our life because they, they become good at it. They, they're really good at it. And it's, hard to even, it's even harder to recognize those controlling tactics and tendencies and those manipulative tendencies within ourselves. But I want you to know that even if you're, if you're here today and your soul has been, has been slowly sucked out and you're under a spell, you're under this, this spirit of witchcraft and manipulation and control that, that you can find yourself again. In Jesus' name, I want you to know you can find yourself again. Again, and that, that process can start today, but I want you to know it's going to be a journey of discovering of who you are in Christ and what he has called you. You can find it again, but it's going to take courage. I'm telling you, it's going to take some courage to get out from under the spell of a manipulator and a controlling person. And you can do it in love. You can. Matthew chapter 16, Jesus, I'll show you, this is where Peter actually confronts Jesus. And, um, and in this situation, Peter was, was manipulating or trying to control Jesus just as Martha was. Jesus is talking about his death and how he was going to die. And Peter says, no, nope, I don't like that. That's not what I want you to do. No way. This is what you should. That's not going to happen. And so he tries to manipulate to get Jesus to do something that he doesn't, he doesn't want to do. He says, no, no, this is what you need to be, what I want you to be, Jesus. It's just a control tactic, Peter did. Look at Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. I want you to notice that just real quick. Time out. Peter took him aside. The people in your life that are trying to control you and manipulate you, that's one of the tactics they'll do. They try to isolate you from other people. They would try to remove you from other people to manipulate and control you. Okay. They, they, they don't do it in front of people because they don't want people to know that they're manipulative and they're controlling. And you're a lot easier. You're a lot easier to control and manipulate in private. So that's another sign kind of on the side there, you guys. Those people in your life that are trying to isolate you from your brothers and sisters in Christ. Those people that are trying to isolate you from friends or relationships, and, and they're trying to just get away with me, get away. No, no, no. And they're very territorial, and they're very, those, that's a sure sign. And I'm speaking to someone today in Jesus' name. You need to receive this. That's a sign, man, that that is a vampire sucking your soul, removing your identity, okay? Peter takes him aside so he can manipulate and control him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. I don't like it. I don't like what you're saying. You need, this, is, this is what should happen. Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You don't have, look, and here's the key. This is why we control people, situations, manipulate, because we don't have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. So that's why we're controlling the situation because I'm actually not thinking about, I don't know and understand what God is doing, so I need to take control of this person and situation. So Jesus turned to his disciples and says, whoever wants to be my disciple must die to your plan, must die to your way, and you trying to get your way and controlling the situation, you must die to yourself, take up your cross and follow my plan and follow my way. Trust me with my plan and my way. So how do we do this, you guys. How do we get out from under the spell of a, and that's what it is. It really is like a spell, man, that being controlled and losing our identity, not even knowing who we are anymore. How do we do it? Let me give you some steps, and, and I want you to be courageous, and the first one's already up there. This is, got, this is where you have to start. You got to start right here. Repent for following, following under false authority. You got to ask God to forgive you for coming under a false authority. Listen, if you give control to another person, God is not directing you. They are. And so to really get out from under that control and that spell, you have to ask God for forgiveness because you have bowed to the will of somebody else instead of bowing to the will of God. 
Are you hearing me, you guys? This is so huge. It's a huge first step to understand that this relationship has gone into an idolatrous form now that I don't have in mind the things of God. I have in mind the things of this person and what they want and what they think. And, and when you're doing the will of someone else, you are not doing the will of God. Romans chapter 8, verse 9 says, but you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You're not controlled by that person. You're not controlled by your need to please people and be a people pleaser. You're not controlled by the need to have people be, accept you and like you and be good with them. You are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit of God. And then he says, he gives a little caveat. If the Spirit of God is living in you, See, that's, that's so key. What spirit is leading us? What spirit is in us? Has something, has a different spirit came and it started to control and lead us astray? Repent. That's the first step. Repent from falling under a false authority. And then here's number two. You want to get out from under the spell? Number two, know what you are called to do. Know what you are called to do. Can you imagine if Jesus was insecure or if he, was, if he got his identity and what Peter thought of him in that situation when Peter like rebuked him? Peter tried to bully him into being someone he thought he should be, doing something Peter thought he, shot, he, thought he should do. What if Jesus was insecure in that moment and Peter was like, hey, come on, no, no, you're not. I'm, I'm not gonna be your disciple, Jesus. I'm not gonna follow you. I'm not gonna be your friend. I'm, not, I'm not gonna follow you on Instagram. Jesus, what would, what, but Jesus, he knew who he was and what he was called to do. He knew he was called to seek and to save sinners, that he was to give his life as a ransom, to be killed and to be raised to life. You Listen, if you want to get out from under the spell of a manipulative and controlling person, you got to know what you are called to do. Know what you're, are you called to cure cancer, be a missionary to Uganda, teach elementary age, you know, what are you called? What are you called to do? You got to define what you're called to do. Are you called to husband, be a husband to your wife, a wife to your, to your husband, parent to your children, to graduate school, serve in a church, witness to people. What are you called to do? I know what I'm called to do. I, I am called to love Veronica, to love my wife. That's my calling. I'm called to parent my children. That's my calling. And I'm called to pastor this church. And there ain't no one who's going to come and manipulate me and, tr and create a different narrative that is going to take me from what I know God has called me to do. Know what you're called to do. Proverbs chapter 29 says it like this. Where there is no vision, where you don't have purpose, if you don't know what you're called to do, the people get what? Out of control. Some of you do not have control. Other people have control. You are out of control because you do not know what you're called to do. And you're under a spell from people who have an idea. Because there's going to be people, that, look, everyone has an idea of what you're supposed to be called to do, how you're supposed to spend your time, what you're supposed to do. Everyone has, but listen, you cannot save everybody. You can't meet everybody. You can't do everything. Calling clarifies. My calling clarifies what I'm supposed to do. So not repent from falling under the false authority. But the second thing we need to do is we need to know what we're called to do. Here's the third thing we need to do to get out from under the spell of controlling people. Learn This one's so empowering. Learn to say no. That's a good word right there, man. That's a powerful word. Yes, let's say it together. One, two, three. No. One, two, three. No. Y'all need to learn to say no. You got to verbalize it and, and express it. Don't just say it like a wimp either. Say it with some authority. Jesus turned to Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. I don't know if you ever tried that before. <laughs> right? It's never worked well for me when I've tried it. I, I'm just, just saying it's not. But G Jesus said this. Jesus said, look, this is what you do. Matthew chapter 5. He says, all you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything else comes from the evil one. Just, just say, just say, no, I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not going there. No, I'm not going to allow that. No, that's not, that's not okay. No, just 
Say, learn to say no. The problem is, I think a lot of us don't say yes or no. We live in this middle ground and we let people control and manipulate because we're not willing to stand up and say no. No. You want to know what every controlling person has in common? Every controlling person has this in common. Every controlling person has someone who allows it. Has someone, look, the person who does the controlling has a problem, okay? That there, there, is, there is some freedom that needs to happen. There's some hurts that need to be healed. But so do those who allow it. We, us who allow people to control us and manipulate us, that's sin. That's, 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 a, that's a problem. Learn to say no. Here's the fourth way you get out from under the spell, you guys. Don't argue. Don't argue with a controlling person. Now, the controlling people, manipulative people, they're used to getting their way. So they are going to get some attitude and some spark in them when you tell them, no. When you say that word, you just be ready, be ready for the tools and the arsenal and the signs. They will use anger and threats and guilt. They will go to work on you. I'm, I'm just be, be aware of this. They're going to try to scare you, scream at you, curse you, threaten you. Look what 2 Timothy chapter 2 says. Again, I say, don't get involved in foolish, ignorant arguments that only start fights. Don't engage in that with that foolish person. Don't do that. A servant of the Lord must not quarrel. Look, you want to be a servant of God? Don't engage. Don't become a vampire just because they're acting like a vampire. Don't engage in that vampire attitude and, and talk. Don't do that. If you want to be a servant of God, you cannot quarrel. Servants of God must not quarrel, but must be kind to everyone. Even controlling people? Yes. Relational vampires? Absolutely. There's a way that you can say no and stand up, but still be loving, but still be kind. Be able to teach and be patient with even relational vampires. Difficult people, he says. Sometimes you just need to, need to uh, um, do this fifth point, and here's what I want you to do. I want you to confront the controller. I'm really, I want to challenge you guys because if you hope to save the relationship, the manipulator needs to be made aware and given opportunity to repent. They do. Look, if you want to save the relationship, you need to confront that person. Some, okay, some manipulative, controlling people in your life, you don't need to save the relationship. Some of them just need to be cut off. You know, some of you just need to distance yourself and be like, I'm done with that. I'm, I'm, I'm moving on. But there are other relationships that you need to and want to, desire to restore and keep. The, the thing about manipulators and controllers, those relationships are often very close relationships. If you look all in the biblical record of all the people that were controlling and manipulative, Adam and Eve and Miriam with Moses and Aaron, even Samson and Delilah, you have Eli and, and his sons and the people, all these different people. It was, it was with close relationships. So if you want to restore and keep that relationship, you have to confront. And the reason why we don't confront them is because we either want to be liked too much and it's not love. That is not love to let people be manipulative and controlling and operate under a false spirit. That is not love. We either want to be liked or we don't want retaliation. But if you want to be out from under that spell, you have to confront and give them an opportunity to be free. Give them an opportunity to repent. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. It says, for those of you that are like, I don't know that person. I don't know if I can confront him. For the spirit of God has given, that the spirit that God has given us does not make us timid. Doesn't make us afraid. Instead, his spirit fills us with power. And not power to go be mean to people and beat up on those people because they beat up on you. Power and love. That I can be strong and I can say no and I can confront you with the authority of Jesus Christ, with the power of his spirit, but I can do it in love to you. Power, love, and look at this, self control. I am not, you're not in control of me. No one else is in control of me. The spirit that God has given me has given me power and love and control of my own emotions, control of my own identity, my own actions, my own future. That's the spirit God has given me. Can I get an amen church? Amen. So you have to, a lot of times when you confront the controller, you need to redefine the relationship though. It needs to be redefined. Jesus told Peter that, that he was being a stumbling block to Jesus concerning the things of God. He said, Jesus said, get behind me. So he said, Peter, let me redefine 
this relationship. Especially if, if you're not going to follow me into my purpose, what God has called me to do, you need to get behind me. And by the way, Peter, I'm the one leading, not you. Get behind me. You got to redefine the relationship. When handling, controlling, or manipulative person, you need to let that person, let it be known that you are more interested in pleasing and following God than pleasing and following them. Confront the person. Why did Peter? See, Peter was, Peter was not like the worst guy ever. He wasn't the worst guy ever. Peter wasn't like, like he didn't hate God. His plan was not to distract Jesus from saving the world and people. No, like just a moment ago, Peter won Jesus jeopardy, right? Peter, Jesus asked, who do men say that I am? And Peter wins Jesus jeopardy. Here, I know what you are, Jesus. Ding, 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 ding. You're the Messiah, the son of the living God. And so this wasn't, Peter's not like a bad person at all. Why did Peter try to control Jesus? You know why? Because Peter didn't understand God's plan. And when you don't understand God's plan, I'm going to default to my plan, my way. It doesn't fit my narrative. Let me end with this. Because if all relationships come from what we create and what we allow, and you don't like what you have, then number six, change what you expect and accept in your relationships. You need to change what you expect and expect. Expect something better in your relationships, accept, I, you got to get to a place where you say, I will not accept disrespect, anger, name calling. I will not accept this tone in my life. Like when a toddler has a fit, some of you parents, a toddler has a fit in a store, right? You don't cave into them every time and let them, let them develop a bad pattern. I hope you don't. But, you know, to be honest, sometimes you guys do, right? If a lot of people are around, you're like, oh, and they just keep going on for 20 minutes. You're like, okay, here's the Snickers but you whisper to him, I'm going to kill you later. (laughs) Right? I know. You got to draw a line in the sand. Guys, change, change the dynamics. What you've allowed, what you created. See, you, you created some things. You allowed some things. You, 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 you responded in like terms. You name called, you, you escalated with them. You need to change what you expect and what you except in that relationship. First Timothy chapter four says, do not let anyone treat you as if you are unimportant. And I speak to hearts and souls right now. Some, some of you who don't know who you are, that your soul has been slowly sucked out by manipulators and controllers in your life. And Jesus really wasn't controlling. There were other people driving you and controlling you. And I speak in the mighty name of Jesus that you are valuable and you are important. And God has a calling for your life. Do not let anybody treat you as if you are not valuable and precious and unimportant. Because of whatever the case may be. Instead, he says, this is what you do. Don't go beat him up. Don't go, don't, go, don't go exchange dukes. Instead, be an example. Don't become a vampire. Don't, don't, don't deploy the same tactics that your parents use and that those people use. And Don't manipulate. Don't maneuver behind the scenes. Be an example to believers with your words, with your actions, with your love, with your faith and uh, pure life. I want to speak to anyone here. Maybe you're, you, you're that controlling, manipulative person. And maybe you know it, you know it. Or maybe you don't really know it, but maybe some of the things just rang true. And I want you to know you're not a bad person. You are not a bad person. It's just, it's maybe you, you're just operating on some things that you were learned, you learned yourself from your parents. Or maybe there's some hurts and insecurities. There's some fears and some things that truly have not been surrendered to God. And because he's not in control of those situations, you haven't surrendered it and you still are, you take control. You're not a bad person. You just need to surrender to Jesus. And I'd love to give you an opportunity to do that today. Or maybe you're here today and you didn't know. Maybe, maybe you're on the, the, the other side and you've allowed someone to control and to manipulate you and to remove your soul, your identity And you're kind of lost. There's even, reality is distorted and there's a lot of confusion happening in your life. And I want to pray for you as well that you would would come out from under the spell and be free and start to rediscover or discover for the very first time, some of you, who God has called you to be, what he's called you to do, and that he'll give you a new name and an identity in him. 
Can we do that together? Can we bow our heads all across this worship center? I'd love to pray for you. God, I just thank you.